Hi everybody, ever seen the film The Astronaut Farmer? It's a brilliant film with Billy Bob Thornton about an everyday American farmer who wants to go into space. And so he sets himself that challenge and through trials and tribulations builds himself a spaceship and gets into space, which is kind of awesome. And the reason I'm mentioning this is not because I want to share my love of Billy Bob Thornton films, wasn't he just ace in Armageddon, it's because I want to talk about these things. Batteries, batteries and supercapacitors. Now I've worked in this industry developing batteries and supercapacitors for, I don't know, 30 years or something like that. So I get asked an awful lot about how to make a battery supercapacitor. Now in their essence, they're actually very simple. It's little more than sticking a copper nail and a zinc nail and a lemon and you'll have enough energy to run a clock. The basic battery is stunningly simple with only five components that are a piece of cake to put together. That's never the issue. The issue is, if you do that, you won't get a lot of power. You need a lot of them. And I don't mean a lot in terms of a couple of hundred, I mean a lot in terms of thousands of them. And if you have to make that, that's challenging, because although people are awesome at lots and lots of things, one thing they're not awesome at is doing the same job time and time again. So take this. It's a 500 farad supercapacitor, which is not a lot of energy. In there is about four and a half metres of aluminium foil, coated both sides with a bit of carbon and rolled up tight. If you think four and a half metres isn't that much, go and get a strip of bake-off foil from your kitchen cupboards, unroll four and a half metres and try and roll it up again. Five will get you ten, you either go offline or you make it wrinkly and you've just unrolled it! Rolling it back up is challenging when it's four and a half metres. Of course you could get a machine to do it, of course you could. But a battery rolling machine will begin at something to like 20 to 25,000 pounds to buy one. That's to make one of these. Of course, as an energy store, you're going to need a couple of thousand of these. So you try doing that time and time again. It's going to be, for a human being, physically impossible to do that repetitious tax. You're going to need to buy some machinery or create some machinery in order to do it. So. If in the world of the batteries you are the astronaut farmer and you have that kind of dedication, then yeah, you're going to be able to make your own batteries for home storage. Expect to spend five to ten years and somewhere in the region of a hundred to two hundred thousand pounds and you'll be able to create a battery bank for your house. No, no worries at all. Perfectly doable. Anybody who has that qualities is going to be able to do it and you're going to be able to invent new batteries. But most people, and I hear most people, I'm talking about 95 to 99% of people are not going to do that. They're going to set off quite happily thinking they can do it, give it a go, make a mess, and just go down to the store and buy a battery. Because a double A battery is 80 pence per unit, and then an 18650 is four pounds per unit. It's actually expensive per unit, but once you've struggled with this, not very much. Now, if you don't believe any of what I've said, that's not an issue for me. Knock yourself out and go and try it. Come back in five years' time and we'll have a cup of tea and I'll give you a biscuit as commiseration. You're going to have an awful job doing that. Now, that seems like a death knell for home storage, but it isn't. What it is, I'm calling your attention to the fact that when you think of a battery, do not rush to the default condition of this being a battery. A battery is an energy store of which this is one example. It's one way of storing energy. But there are just so many ways of storing energy. The first one that comes to mind is the Finnish sand battery. It was in the news recently. It's basically just a big old pile of sand in a thermos. They heat it up when they've got the energy generation and then they let the heat out later. And that's brilliant when you think that something like 60% of our energy requirement is in space and water heating. The amount we use for things like lights and electronics is piffling in comparison. Now there's also gravity batteries and gravity batteries are a huge area that include pumped hydro, the sand stuff that we did with the sand wheel and even just dropping rocks down a shaft. There's a building in India where the entire building is powered overnight by four lift shafts with weights in them. Then of course we've got flywheels which has been actively researched and compressed air or compressed gas, whether it's compressed by a compressor or by the pressure of seawater. Then there's a really, really good alternative electrochemical battery that's very rarely explored and that's the flow battery. All of these work really well in home storage because space isn't a limitation. Of course, in cars, space is a limitation, so it's pretty much no good for them. 
but at a home storage when you don't have that same limitation there's just a huge range of alternatives for you to explore rather than rushing straight to these because rushing straight to these is a bit like going on your first date and saying let's skip the drinks and meal and go straight to the smooth jazz these aren't that good. They're, they're brilliant in certain circumstances, like lots of things are dependent on their circumstances, but they're not the best. I mean, they're expensive. They don't last very long and they're an absolute pain to make. Whereas there are a lot of other alternatives that are suitable for budgets and skill levels out there for everybody, if people would explore them rather than rushing straight to this. Anyway, I hope that made you think a little bit about alternatives that might be out there that could suit you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.